Hey good people, it is Tishire from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that I am passionate about y'all and that is how to find stylish and high quality pieces at affordable price points. And I've touched on this topic before in the past, sharing with you some of my favorite affordable brands, also telling you what I think you should be looking for as you were shopping on those more affordable websites. And today's video is an extension of that theme because you don't have to spend a lot to look good. That is a very common misconception. It is a myth that I want us to break through today. And as a matter of fact, I am so excited for today's video because I actually have pieces, new items to share with you that are going to elucidate or highlight each of these easy tips. And that is because it is in partnership with my friends over at Lulu's. I have shopped at Lulu's before and so this partnership is one that I think is really seamless for today's video. Much of what I talk about in this video y'all is actually going to be highlighted on a day-to-day -day basis over on social media and I don't want you to miss anything. I, it, it would be a tragedy if you did, okay? So make sure you are part of the gang gang all across the internet. And with that said, let's get started. Now, I have five tips to share with you all today. And the first one is this. You've heard me say it before, but we just go come in hot, okay? As a reminder, make sure that when you are shopping at an affordable price point for pieces that are gonna be stylish but also high quality, that you are starting off by searching based upon fabrication. This is something that I learned a while ago and it has truly changed my life. It has changed my shopping habits. I am able to narrow down my search. I'm able to narrow down what I am looking for, the items that I have in mind, by the fabric, which lets me know whether or not they're even going to be the kind of pieces that are high quality enough to enter my wardrobe. As you all know, I try really hard not to bring any 100% man-made materials into my wardrobe. That means no 100% polyester pieces if I can help it, no 100% acrylic pieces, and so on and so forth. What I tend to stick the most to are, of course, those natural fabrics like silk, like linen and like cotton. Now, depending on the price point, it may be pretty hard to get like silk and cashmere. However, cotton and linen should not be a problem whatsoever. And so to narrow things down, what I did was I went to the Lulu's website and I typed into the search bar, cotton skirt, linen skirt, linen dress, etc. And that allows the website to do its own filter so that I'm not being inundated with pieces that are gonna make me have squirrel moments right? When I'm excited about this, excited about that, and then I realize, uh, that doesn't quite fit within my style pillar of elevated simplicity, okay? Also, I know that I want to shop as much as possible in ways that are not going to be harmful to the environment. And Lulu's has actually done some of this work for us because outside of the search engine, of course, you also have under new the cotton shop, okay? When was the last time you saw a website that actually filtered based upon fabric? It's Lulu's for me, okay? And I found today's piece to highlight this tip in the cotton shop. And the first piece I wanna share with you is this high-waisted cotton ribbed skirt, as you can see the fabric there. And I think ribbed fabric on cotton really makes a difference because it tends to make a piece look a bit more elevated. And so you will see that theme throughout the pieces that I show you in today's video. But aside from being high-waisted and ribbed, it also is slightly ruched on the left side as well as this really cool tie as well. I love this skirt. <laughs> It is not only comfortable, it's 95% cotton with 5% spandex. Spandex, of course, helps it to kind of go over the curves. But it also shows a lot of thigh meat. And I'm, I'm in my thigh meat, I'm in my thigh meat season. All right, it's white toenail season, it's thigh meat season. And I love that this shows that, okay? And for me, the way I wanted to style it was in an example of contrast dressing. I wanted to take something that could be deemed as very dressy and make it more street. So the first thing I did was take my favorite vintage Allen Iverson tee. I tied it in a knot so that you have a little peak of skin. That's always important for me when you're wearing something that's high-waisted. I mean, peak of skin here today, of course, and I'll get into this dress in just a moment. But I think it tends to break things up, especially because the shirt as well as the skirt are both black, okay? 
And then I took my Bottega moto jacket. I mean, talk about street style, right? Cape that over my shoulders, which is something that I love. Also wearing this really cool kind of retro vibe pair of sunglasses, also from Lulu's, which I'll share with you in my fifth tip for today. And the piece that I'm also obsessed with are the shoes. They have about a three inch heel or so, but what I love about them the most is the rope detail. Again, when you are wearing a high slit, when that thigh meat is out, it is great to have something that wraps around your leg because it automatically makes your legs look much longer. Now I should say that everything that I'm sharing with you today is going to be a size medium. I'm a US size 6 or a 28, 29 inch waist, okay? My shoes are going to be either a size 10 or a size 11. These are a size 10. And I want to show you that rope detail that I mentioned. And something else that's really great about them as well, y'all is this little piece on the end. You already know how I feel about gold jewelry. Gold anything, okay? And so this just adds a bit of finesse, a bit of pizzazz that I think really made this outfit come together nicely. It's the kind of thing that I probably would wear on date night. Maybe I'm meeting somebody new. I don't wanna be too dressy, but I also wanna bring a vibe. I wanna bring a like, you know, this old thing, this old, this ain't nothing, to bring that kind of vibe, okay? So you, you want to ease them into the flyness. This gives them just a little bit so they know who you are, but it's not over the top, okay? It is an example of contrast dressing, and the cotton skirt, for me, seals the deal, especially when it is an affordable piece that I think is also high quality. And my next tip is to limit embellishments, to limit embellishments. And by embellishments, I mean things like additional zippers, sequins, uh, fringe, uh, mirrors. I don't know. Additional things, the accoutrement, okay, that are added to a garment. I think if you were shopping at an affordable price point, you stand to find pieces that are more long lasting and that are going to stand the test of time in your wardrobe. If you just kind of ignore some of those things and go for the more streamlined pieces. Now, it doesn't mean that they have to be boring, okay? The dress that I am wearing today actually fits under this style tip. It is 86% rayon, which is a naturally derived fabric. It also has a bit of spandex in it to go over the curves. But the reason it fits within this tip, y'all, is that it's not necessarily embellished. It has cutouts, which is a unique design feature, right? So it's totally fine to find pieces that are a little bit more kind of judged up, jazzed up, but that's because of the cut of the fabrication and maybe because of the color of the piece and much less about what is added to it. It's about how it is designed. And so this piece, as you can see, has a cut out on the right side. We're back to that thigh meat, that high slit on the left side, okay? And it also has an asymmetrical top. Another ribbed piece as well. Now, what I can say is that uh, this size medium, I probably could have gone up to a large because while my waist tends to be pretty narrow, is that the word? The girl, slim in the waist, thick in the hips, okay? Um, I think that it fits my waist perfectly, but I probably could have gone up to a large given the size of everything else, okay? It's, it's Pilates in the front, cornbread, collard greens in the back and, and throughout the hips. Um, and so because of that, I think a large probably would have been great for me. So keep that in mind if you have a similar shape, okay? However, what I can say is that the right types of undergarments are going to be really important for this. And I'm very sensitive to that because I did get it in a medium. So, you know, it's a little tight. It's a little tight. And what I would recommend is either great shapewear or you may find like a great contour panty like the ones from Understance that I've mentioned to you all before over on social media. I will have what I am wearing link down below because I think it's really important when you're wearing more fitted, fitted pieces to keep that in mind. I, I do not want my tribe to have any visible panty lines. They shall not prosper against us, okay? And I decided to take this dress all the way, all the way up. We went all the way up with this, okay? So I am wearing a 
great blazer. This one is from Lily Silk and I have this caped over my shoulders. I think the gold buttons play really, really nicely with this oh, these oversized gold swirl earrings. These earrings came from a boutique in Tulum. Sorry that I cannot link them. However, I understand that they are an eye-grabbing piece. They're art. Their art. Um, and so I will link the boutique where they come from in the description box and you'll probably be able to track the designer down if you go over to their website because I feel like these earrings are what pulled this entire look together and made it look extremely classy. Um, that and also the um, texture in my fur mules from YSL. Also wearing my Valentino V logo bag. So again, we are in all black here, but between the earrings and the gold button, then the texture of the shoes, I feel like we're able to really play around with texture, with metallics, to give it a lot of interest and make this dress look a lot more expensive than what it was. Next up, let's talk about using affordable brands to shop for pieces that may be a pop of color, that add a pop of pizzazz to your wardrobe. Now, as someone who fits under the Elevated Simplicity Style pillar that I talk about in my ebook, which will be linked down below you all, I understand that I tend to lean more towards neutrals. I mean, that's my bread and butter. I talk all the time about how that is my happy place. But it doesn't mean that I don't also crave a pop of color here and there, especially this time of year. And since colorful pieces are not going to be what I wear day to day, why not use affordable brands to find great colorful pieces that I won't get as much wear out of, but I also think are going to enliven my wardrobe. And so I have two things from Lulu's that I want to mention to you today, both in my two favorite colors, orange and green. You are about to get so excited. Just wait. I know I just said you were going to get excited. This probably looks like um, a, a handmade crocheted oven mitt. I want you to ignore what it looks like here and look at what it looks like on. Is it not giving Jacquemus? Is it not giving Dion Lee? I'm talking about some of the best contemporary designers that are out right now. I, I, I'm, I'm shook, okay? And this piece is 50% viscose, another naturally derived fabric. Get into the clavicle moment that it's also providing us. Yep, that pop of green, honey. That pop of green, Kelly green at that. And I'm wearing it with my high waist, but step waist, and that means the waist is a bit asymmetrical, um, denim from a Goldie. These are actually now on sale, y'all, and so I will make sure they are linked down below, of course. Um, and I decided to do something really fun with the shoes. These shoes are also from Lulu's. They are a pair of brown tie sandals, and there's something about brown that I also think plays really nicely with pops of color, especially because the brown is a very natural nude to me. I'll share these a bit more uh, with an upcoming look. However, I just want to say and stop and take a moment to say it is so hard to find browns that really are nude on deep melanated or deep chocolate skin. And I think Lulu's hit these at the park. And I did something very fun here, which is that I tied them around the bottom of the pants because the pants are a relaxed fit, right? So now what we have is this really great play with proportions where the top is more fitted, the pants are a bit more relaxed and they're baggier, especially in the hips and the legs, and then they're fitted again around the ankle. I think this is just kind of where true style resides when you are able to make things very interesting to the eye. Nothing is just one type of uh, texture, number one, but also one type of uh, fit from top to bottom. Your eyes are literally having to scan each and every piece for some element of difference and it just makes everything come together so nicely. And to also bring in a bit more of texture, I have my bag here from Stodd. 
This I grabbed in collaboration with Farfetch and it is a micro bag that is a raffia and it also has a crossbody strap and I thought the color of this play really really nicely with the color of the shoes. And we are not done yet with the pops of color because I also grabbed these mules from Lulu's. I know, I know, I know. Hello Lux says it best. Are you dying? Are you dying? Girl, is there slow singing and flower bringing because you have been sent on to glory? Do you see these? Satin with the orange, the orange. Rhinestone embellishment. Get into that heel, honey. Also completely satin covered. Now, I did go up a size in these. These are a size 11. I tend to do that when a shoe is closed with a point just because it makes them a bit more comfortable. For me, I feel like a pair of orange shoes are now my superpower. I've transformed. Uh, talk to me nice because I have a pair of orange satin mules in my wardrobe and so because you know we are transitioning into fall I don't want us to but it is almost September at the time of me filming this what that means is that I wanted to find a way to wear these that I um, would really get excited for for a pre-fall look and so I am wearing a silk button down top I am also wearing my Dior brooch to you know play around with the gold and my necklaces pulled out my lack of color white fedora and then I did something that I think is also a bit more interesting which is instead of wearing a pair of pants I wore a pair of ripped denim shorts so these have a bit of an unfinished hem and while it looks very refined from the waist up I'm giving you a little bit of flavor a little bit of flair from the waist down between these ripped denim shorts and also bringing the elevation back in with the satin shoes and that is an example of why I would add pops of color to my wardrobe using affordable brands now my fourth tip is all about using affordable brands for coordinating sets great coordinating sets of course that also fit within the, my first two tips of making sure the fabrication is quality but also making sure that you limit the embellishments and the pandemic definitely reminded us of the benefits of dressing our best while putting the least amount of effort in and I think that's why coordinating sets became so popular especially on some of the more affordable websites I mean you can find some great things that don't break the bank that can be interchanged which means you will get a lot more bang for your buck you just get more miles out of the pieces and I want to share this two-piece set we have the same type of like asymmetrical top from Lulu's to highlight this point of finding great coordinating sets at affordable price points, it is another skirt that also has a high slit, as you can see. I kept my tip in mind of looking for neutrals. It's in a great chocolate brown. It is ribbed once again, very stretchable, and the fabric is rayon, which is a naturally derived fabric. Now, the way that I'm going to style this may not be how others would, but I like the idea of monotone dressing. And so I put it on once again with those brown sandals from Lulu's. And as you can see, those sandals are really a like natural nude for a dark brown skin tone. Love it. I absolutely love it and I love the fact that they were super affordable. I grabbed them in a size 10 once again. I'm a 10, 10 and a half and so I tend to go between a 10 and a size 11. And to add a bit of color, what I did was add my Oye bag. Oye is a great black owned brand and they sent me this bag. I am obsessed with the different panels of color. We got black, we got this great rust color, and we also have the mustard yellow, which I think pairs really, really nicely, of course, with this chocolate brown. Also, once again, obviously had to add sunnies. I will talk about these a bit in my next tip, but the sunnies I'm wearing are by Amazon. And I think the orange to the lens helps to add color to an otherwise monotone outfit. And Lulu's has lots of coordinating sets 
pants. I definitely recommend if you were looking for something like this to add to your wardrobe to stop by. And here's my thing. I could definitely see me wearing this top, really the skirt as well, sometime as we transition into fall and putting like a really nice cream or winter white blazer on top. It would be so, so delicious, right? The skirt, the same thing. Wearing maybe something up top that's more jewel tone that pairs nicely with the chocolate brown. Putting a blazer over my shoulders. I mean, in many ways, it is a two for one, which is why I highly recommend looking for coordinating sets when you are shopping at affordable brands. And my last tip for looking for stylish and high quality pieces on affordable websites is to use those types of sites to find great accessories, great accessories. And by that, I mean everything from hats to belts to jewelry, etc. I want to share with you two pair of earrings. First, let's talk about this pair that you all actually went up for when I first introduced them. And they are these gold like starburst earrings from Nasty Gal. I got these earrings to go along with a New Year's look and I have had them y'all for at least two years, maybe longer. They were under $10. I could even wear them with what I'm wearing today. Just kind of think about what that pop of gold, that like gold star burst would do to a monotone outfit, to an all black outfit. And the other pair is from Aldo and get into these serpent earrings y'all and we have the uh clear rhinestones as well as the black and then the emerald green in the eyes i got these during the holiday season and i feel like while serpents may not be what many people think of as it relates to holiday season uh the sparkle surely is and so these earrings would have been triple the price point had they been from a more contemporary designer I got them from Aldo and I feel like, I mean, they haven't turned, they haven't changed color. I've worn them about three times. And again, if it's something that you know that you are not going to get a lot of wear out of, but you can see a use for in your wardrobe, why not grab it at an affordable price? Another great category of things to get at an affordable price point and you want it to be stylish, but also high quality is going to be sunnies. Sunnies within the accessories category, of course. And uh, let me just say that these sunglasses from Lulu's, they are the one and not the two, okay? These came with a hard case, magnetic closure, as well as a cleaning cloth. So impressed. Now, they were a bit on the higher end for the brand. They were $55, but I think well worth the investment. I am obsessed right now with the idea of a retro frame and the fact that the, that the frame is gold as well as having this kind of like golden lens is so, so amazing to me. You all have seen me wear these throughout the entire video and I just think they add such a great pop to my different pieces since I do tend to wear so many gold accessories. These are going to definitely get a lot of wear in my wardrobe. And for me, they read almost Tom Ford, right? Tom Ford or Gucci, I feel. And I think going to an affordable brand for sunglasses is so great because you can find some that are not only high quality, but that may be dupes for some of the big designers. And I'm someone who hesitates to spend a lot of money on sunglasses because I don't trust myself. I really don't. Girl, give me a French 75 and everything is being left down at the institution. I, I just, I, I have learned myself as I age, okay? So very expensive sunglasses is not always something that I'm on and I tend to have more affordable pair than designer pair, which brings me to my second pair that you've also seen from Amazon. And y'all went up for these. Y'all really did. Now, they are black with an orange lens. They also come in a tortoise um, frame as well. Uh, these were under $15, and they are for sure, for sure, a Tom Ford dupe. I am so excited about these little $15 sunglasses. Y'all have absolutely no idea. What I found is that if you give me an option, I'm gonna go for a retro frame every single time. I'm gonna go for this kind of retro aviator or I'm gonna go for a cat eye. This is something I think that speaks to like a 
adding an element of vintage style to your outfit that's so good. I mean, even with, with what I'm wearing today, it looks like I tried so hard with this little black dress when all I did was layer some necklaces and add a pair of $15 Amazon Sunnies. You can't beat it with a stick. And that is all good people for today's video, all about how to find stylish and high quality pieces at affordable price points. I hope you have enjoyed it. Which one of the tips resonated with you or what did I leave out? What could you share with our tribe about how to find some great pieces and not break the bank? In the meantime, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also you are following me over on social media and I will see you good people cross the internet. Peace.